your life. And may that be our testimony in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We are grateful, Lord, for another week. Thank you for your protection. Thank you, Lord, for your loving kindness. Thank you for seeing us through in the journey of life. Thank you because in the midst of difficult situation, you remain our Alpha. You remain our Omega. You are our sufficiency. The Jehovah, the Lord that supplied all our needs according to his riches and glory. Thank you so much, Lord. We are grateful for victory through the blood of Jesus over every oppression of the devil of, of, the, of the evil one. Thank you for giving us victory. <laughs> Father, glory be to your holy name. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, this morning I pray that your word will come to us. Amen. And Lord, we shall be blessed. Amen. But in Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Praise the Lord, church. Hallelujah. Let's have our seats and uh, let's turn our Bible to the book of the beginning. The book of Genesis. Don't forget that um, our theme for the month is in his steps. In his steps. That is our theme in his steps. And Genesis chapter 3. Verse from verse 7. Let me read from verse 6. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and the tree to the desire to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did it and gave also unto her husband with her and he did it. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked. And they saw fig leaves together, and made themselves apron. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, We are a thou. And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, That is God said, Who told thee that thou was naked? As thou eating of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? And the man said, The woman, whom thou givest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did it. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did it. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Let me take you back to that verse um, 11. He said, and he said, God said, who told thee? That is, who told you? So this morning I'll be talking on who told you. Praise God. Hallelujah. There are so many informations we carry around in our hearts. There are so many things we carry, we believe, and we act upon. But the question is, who or what is the source of that information? We are talking about walking in the steps, in the steps of Jesus. 
So many people are not walking in the steps of Jesus and they're in the church. They belong to one denomination or the other. And somehow people have come to believe they are bishop, they are pastor, they are reverend, or they are prophet more than what God says in his word. At times, people are the product, even not at times, you are the product of what you hear. You are the product of the information that come across to you. Now, God was talking here after all Adam and Eve had done. And of course, they said, God came in the cool of the day to have fellowship with them. But the Bible says that they have gone to heal themselves. And Adam, when God said, Adam, where are you? And he said for Adam to come out clean. Adam began to say, that we are hiding ourselves because we find out that we are naked. And the next thing that God said, that who told you that you are naked? Who told you? created them and put them in the garden. God put them, made everything available. God was taking care of them. They left nothing in the garden. More than everything physical, they were enjoying the fellowship with the Almighty. And so, God who gave them instruction and said, you are in this garden to the ground, this and that, Eat all the fruits, don't eat these. Instruction was given. And God was coming in the cool of the day to fellowship with them, to interact with them. Suddenly, another personality came the way of Eve and the way of Adam. And that one came with another information. And now, they were not carrying the new so-called revelation I said we are naked and God said who told you are naked hallelujah yeah. he created them perfect he created them perfect the Bible says all that God created they were what? they were good but suddenly the man, the woman created good now they had another information from another source they said we are naked they said, who told you that you are naked this message, I can, you know, I want to address it from two sides. From the side of our relationship with God and from the side of our faith in God's ability. From the first side of our relationship, our work with God. Now, some people started the journey of faith, I mean, journey of, uh, of this journey to heaven very well. But after some times, some information came up and they began to say it does not matter. What mattered to them before, they said it's no longer, it does not matter. To do so, so and so, it does not matter. It does not matter. Hallelujah. Amen. Look at the book of Galatians chapter 5 verse 7. Give me Galatians chapter 5 verse 7. Paul the apostle find himself in that situation as a preacher. He was the man that preached to the church in Galatia and so many of those uh, Gentile churches, Ephesus, Philippi, and so on and so forth. But see, suddenly after some time that the church had been established and they are doing well, now he began to hear some funny, you know, information of the so-called revelation from the church in Galatia. And Paul was right and said, you did wrong well. Who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? Now, you started very well. Where did you get another information from that you are no longer obeying the truth? In some translations, you see, in New Living Translation, it says, you were running the race so well. That's the New Living, New Living Translation. Said you are running the race so well. Who has held you back from following the truth? Maybe that, maybe that 
message or that information has to do with you this morning. You started very well, running the race of holiness, walking in righteousness, walking in purity, doing the will of God. But somehow now, somebody has infested your life with another information. And Paul said, you were running the race well. Is anybody in the house this morning? You go on again some years ago. You started following Jesus. You are walking righteously before God. Is there any prophet that has confused you? Is there any preacher on the radio or television that has confused your faith? Is there any other alternative that you are seeking at the expense of God's ultimate? You must ask yourself, you are running very well. But now, who is the one that is holding you back? New, 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 the NIV, the International Version says, You were running a good race. Who caused it on you to keep you from obedience? You are running a good race. We are in a head time that people no longer want to be by the truth. We want to cut corners in the name of ministry, in the name of churches. So many pastors now, because they want a large progression, they want to lower the standard and tell you it does not matter. You can do whatever you like. You can do this and that. There is no emphasis on righteousness, no emphasis on brilliance, no emphasis on doing the will of God. Now, it's just like it's an open check. Whatever you feel you want to do, just do. Now, you know, the glory of God covers you. Once you are saved, you are forever saved. You know, whatever you have done, grace has covered it. And that is why we see different kind of passions of the Christianity today. But you are here this morning, and the Lord is saying, who told you? That new life you have, you say revelation, you say you are living. Who told you? That thing that you have dropped and you are now living in a new life, who told you? Is that the way you receive it? When Jesus was addressing a church in the book of Revelation, he said, All fasts that which you have received, so that another person will not take your crown. Oh, you come to Redemption Family Church, say, Oh, our church. Why is it that everything is too hard in our church? I have gone to Susan and to church, they invited me. That church, ah, everything is flowing there. And they said something that are not in tangent with the scriptures. And now, you are not living that kind of life. Who is your preacher? Who is speaking to you? You say it's a new revelation. Where did you get it from? He said, you did wrong well. You were running a good race. Another part, the Berean Standard Bible. I hope you know the Berean Christians. The Bible says they search the scriptures daily, if those things are so. So there is a Berean, you know, standard version of the Bible which says, You were running so well. Who has obstructed you? Who has obstructed you from obeying the truth? Who has obstructed? Who has, who has put obstruction along your path? You know, when you are going away and there is an obstruction, Instead for you to make sure that you remove the obstruction. Hallelujah. God who promised that the crooked way shall be made straight. That also, that the mountains shall be brought low. Instead for you to make sure you confront your mountain, you confront your fear, you confront that obstruction to make sure that the mountain become a plain so that you can walk through. What are you trying to do? You want to find another path. If you cannot go in this way of holiness, there must be another part that is easier. If this road is looking difficult, there will be for alternative. And that's why you see now people are looking for different alternatives that to keep them cool. Praise God. Okay. I say, ah, yes, ah, thank God. Well, our church is fantastic. We are enjoying church. You are not called to come and enjoy church. Church is not for enjoyment. Church is a place of revelation of prophecy. Church is to speak to your life. And so when you leave the church, then you cannot go outside the church and live the life of what you are receiving in the Bible. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Oh yes, thank God now we want to have a youth program. 
like uh, Pastor Zach said, everything is going to be fantastic. This and that. Yes, we do some things, you know, just to make sure that it's a way to bring people in. But when they come, they are coming to hear the Bible. Praise God. Hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Look at some of the people that are in our Yoruba church today. Thank God for what God is doing in their lives. Amen. Amen. And I hope that, uh, thank God, Pastor uh, Peter is in the house this morning, that they are due for another you know, special program. Praise God. Now, we had a breakfast meeting for them. We invited them, the people that are all area boys in this area, we invited them, we set table before them, we gave them good meal, they gave them, you know, take home and things like that, and they came. Now, to make it pleasurable, to eat, to feed, to treat, they would treat them as king. And we said, we are not calling them area boys, we call them royal boys. So we treated them with royalty. Now, but when they came, after they have eaten, the gospel was presented to them. Let me tell you something. The gospel has no alternative. <laughs> Is somebody hearing me? Yes, there is no way you want to preach the gospel without preaching it and pointing people to Christ. And so, it is too hard. Let us know at the standard. Let's know it. Let's know it. If we are doing this small, small, there is no small, small in being born again. Is that like you are born again or you are not born again? Is that like you receive Christ or you don't receive Christ? There is no small, small. Shout hallelujah. Because anyone who claims to be born again must confess his sins, must do away with his sins. Must come into the light, must accept Jesus as his God and Savior. That is the gospel, repentance and faith towards God. Acts 3 and he says, Repent ye therefore, that also, and be converted, that your sins will be blotted out. The condition for your sins to be blotted out is repentance and conversion. Some people say they repented, but they are not converted. Conversion is that, look, there is a way that you are going, a way that seemed good to a man. The Bible said the hand is destruction. So when you say, I confess my sin, I accept Jesus, then the next thing is to be converted, which means change your roots, change your way. And as the Bible puts it, he that still should do what? Should still do no He that is committing fornication should no longer commit fornication. He that is doing wrong things should no longer. You are converted, you change your direction. That is the true salvation. And when you do that, the Bible says your sins shall be blotted. So if you don't repent and change your direction, your sins cannot be blotted or will not be blotted. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. There are people today think that you are born again sometimes, but the salvation is gone. But they did not know. Who told you? The life you are living now, who told you? Your way of life, who told you? Your behavior, who told you? The character you are displaying, who told you? Are there any people today that hate their father, hate their mother, that they call their mother witches because somebody told them? The prophet told them that your mother is the one that is oppressing against you. They got the information, not from the scripture, not from the Bible. Even some of the prayer will pray, Ah, it's my enemy. Who told you that is your enemy? When Jesus said, Pray for your enemy, is that something? Pray for your enemy. Or you want to stone your enemy. Suddenly you are carrying offense all around. You are carrying offense all around. Some people you see, you hear some things and you begin to find out who told them. We should do what? Search all things. That's awesome. yes, and what do you do with it? And hold on to that which is what is the truth. But if you don't go for the truth, and the truth is contained in the word of God. 
If you are doing otherwise, the question is that where do you get that information from? Who told you? Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So who told you? But then Amplified Bible says, you were running the race well. Who has interfered? <laughs> Who has interfered and prevented you from obeying the truth? Who has interfered in this journey of faith? Who has prevented you in obeying the truth? Child, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you look at some people, you know, well, I'm going to leave the church. And when they leave the church, and you see that their life is not in correlation with the word of God. Oh, so you don't call me. Don't call me. Don't call me. When you are in a place where the truth is preached, when God called you, you are expected to uphold the truth. That's awesome. But when you say God called you and your life is not in agreement with the word of God again, it's a blessing for pastors to have girlfriend. To have mistress is not, it's not a news. They don't see it as anything and say, I have to rock. As a pastor, as a counselor, I hear so many things. And you begin to hear, and the message that is we born again 20 years, you born again 25 years. Now, suddenly, the truth, they know they drop it. And they pick something else, another information along the way. You have never had pastor that say, after all, Solomon was a friend of God. After all, David was a friend of God. He didn't can have many wives, you know, and what is preventing, you know, people want to write another Bible. They want to do another thing. To justify their wrong ways. It is something for you to be walking in the light. Oh, there's a level you are, there's a level you are attaining that also spiritually. You want God to help you. You discover that yes, ah, no, I'm trusting you. This thing in my life, I want you to go. I am no, I am pressing on that upward ways. That also new heights I'm getting every day. And of course, and you are trusting God for mercy. God help me, oh Jesus, please help me. This thing in my life, I want you to deliver me from it so that I will be able to live. A better life that also more holiness life that is somebody who is going but for you to say because and your error now becomes a doctrine error your error becomes a preaching nobody can be holy nobody can be free from fornication nobody everybody is deceiving himself nobody i have been in the faith 25 years nobody you are preaching another gospel you are preaching another sermon what you are saying, it is not what Jesus Christ, you know, established for us to follow through. To follow in his steps. That is why he said, who told you? So, Adam and Eve suddenly they had another gospel. They had another information. And God of heaven said, Come, you said you are naked. Who told you? Where did you get that from? Where did you that get that message from? The new thing you call revelation, we are to get it from. What you are carrying all around today, who told you? People are shifting their attention from the cross. You don't want to walk through the way of the cross. Because Jesus Christ said, This is what we are calling to. <clears throat> that Jesus Christ suffered. He has made the result for us to follow. And Jesus Christ says, if anybody wants to be my disciple, what does he have to do? He must deny himself. He must carry his cross daily. Carry his cross daily. The time things are hard in our nation and nations of the world, people are caught in corners. Many of you say, if you know, I thank God, I am blessed. How were you blessed? Will you come and tell us how many gig back did you pay before you get that contract? Praise the Lord. But I know now today, if you have, you know, a brother or a relation that is a commissioner with government, that is a minister with government, ah, if you call it, you say, ah, oh, well, hallelujah. Because you believe that the money don't come. And if that man, in one year, if he has not been to the new house, I said, the head of our it's not correct. Everybody is making it. It's not making it. 
He's not using his brain. What we call using brain is to steal government money. Is to be corrupt. That's what you call brain. Which means if you are there, then you will do worse. What has changed your heart about learning the truth? What has corrupted the gospel of Jesus Christ? Oh, if you are in light in the midst of darkness, your light should attract others to Christ. Is it? it? Praise God. Hallelujah. When people know you are living in Christian time, they want your life will try it. But now suddenly, if you are not a friend, say, ah, my friend, my friend, don't believe I'm not telling you his friend. Because he has seen your emptiness, he has seen the loophole in your life, and he can say, ah, oh, my friend, ah, he's my friend. You can't no longer preach the gospel because your life has come to darkness. And you can no longer stand. But Jesus Christ, because you have believed in another gospel, you have believed in another gospel. Praise God. Second Corinthians chapter 11 verse 4. Second Corinthians chapter 11 verse 4. Give me Second Corinthians 11 verse 4. What does it say? Second 11 verse 4. For if he that comes, preaching what? Another Jesus. Whom we have not preached. Or if you receive another spirit, which ye have not received, or another gospel, which ye have not accepted, ye might well be able to. Look at the next verse. For I suppose I was not a whip behind the very first apostles. The next one. But though I be rude in speech, yet not in knowledge, but we have been thoroughly made manifest among you in all things. May God give us understanding. What was Paul saying there? Paul is saying. For if someone comes to you and preaches a Jesus other than, that is what the Bible put it, other than Jesus, other than the Jesus who preached, or if you receive a different spirit from the spirit you receive, or a different gospel from the one you accepted, you put up with it easily enough. That is, you are easily compromised to it. Another gospel. Another spirit. Another Jesus. If it is Jesus we are called to follow, he has told us it is a journey of sacrifice. It's a journey of submission. It's a journey of endurance. It's not an easy road. We are passing through to heaven. Some people tell us it's an easy road. And <laughs> praise the Lord. As they praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And that's how you see, you know, marriage vow today. And there's nothing wrong to modernize the church, we modernize our marriage vow. That's also. But we are not losing the contents. I will be with you. I mean, not, I will be with you. I will stand with you in difficult time. I will stand with you. You understand that? In sickness. I will stand. The husband must stand with the wife. The wife must stand with the husband to fight the devil, to resist the devil. That also, oh, that's beautiful. But some people, they will, they will not say, ah, for better, for best. For richer, for richest. <laughs> because they don't want that idea to say, it's for better, for best. For richer, for richest. Shout hallelujah. We are having a baby ceremony uh, this coming week. At daylight hall, you know, you know, they have that big event center. Maybe something. A person is doing any ceremony. Shout hallelujah. But do you know, to my shock, since I've known the man of God, he was chaplain in the polytechnic for 10 years. He's our youth coordinator for the states. Do you know I never knew that he never had it? For several years of marriage. You never, you never, you know, praise God. 
There's something about doing other things with this one. You know, as close as they had to be, praise God. Amen. They are having their loss and they are making a celebration to the glory of Jesus. And how much rent they like or <laughs> you know. And if they are want to talk, okay, everybody can. When I invite you, you are sending invitation to me. Praise God. And I was going I said, look, I don't need to. It was when I got that information and people grab I said, I said, wow. And I said, oh. I'm coming to your house. You put that day. Say, sir, whenever you want to come to me, so that I can describe you in your house. You think pastor don't have problems? And you here we come to help me to preach. You here to come to encourage people. Shout out to you. It be somebody that is not grounded in the truth. Will have be called a wife. And throw the woman under the mother. Or if it does not do that, you will go procreate outside. But there are people that stand for the truth. They are not going to receive another gospel. They are not going to follow another gospel. There is no way you say, talk about it. There is no way you paint it. If it is not in line with Jesus, it is fake. You can package it, it will look attractive, but anything that is not in line with Jesus, it is fake. He says that you look that another Jesus, another spirit, and another God. I hope you are not taking any one of those. That you are ready to stick your neck and say, look, this is the way. Praise God. Job said, when all those calamities things were happening to you, Job said, even though he slays me, he becomes, yes, I will trust him. I will maintain my own way before him. Can you imagine that? He said, though, all these things, you know, you got to a point, you know, you know, at times you get to a point as a Christian, somehow you may be confused. Because, you know, is it God that is testing me? Is it the devil? I think you have fought some battles, you do victory, you do everything. I mean, it's a sin. The problem is not solved. And you begin to ask yourself, God, is it sin you have confessed and confessed it? Praise God. Hallelujah. But there is no sin to confess again. Shout hallelujah. And he talks to and says, What is wrong? Learn from you. He got to that point. He got to was a righteous man. Compared to every other person in the whole world. And he was confronted with this challenge. And Job got to a point, he said, well, even if God kills me, wife said, deny God, cause God and that. Frank said, so many things that should get him discouraged to receive another information, to get information from another source. But the man said, no, I know what he told me. I know my redeemer lyrics. In all these things, he is alive. I know that even if I die, if my body comes with this process, I know in my spirit, I will see. Shout out to And that's what we say, that we, we said, try your doubts on every hand, and we cannot understand. Of the way that God will lead us through the pleasant promised land. But we try to do our best, all according to His word. We will understand it better by and by, by and by, by and by. When the morning comes, when the sea. We will tell the story how we overcome. We will understand it better. Ten 